Uh, hi, uh, it's three o'clock. So let's start the AIP open seminar today. Uh, first, I have to uh, announce this uh, uh, administrative uh, issues. Uh, here are some important notice about this seminar. One, the reprodu reproduction is prohibited and reproducing all or any part of the content is, is prohibited without the author's permission. Three, this seminar will be recorded and the video will be available on the Wigan ARP website later. Four, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please scroll to the bottom of the page and click the Q&A tab, and you can put questions or comments in the box. And we welcome uh, questions uh, very much, so please do so. Okay, and uh, this is uh, AIP Open Seminar starting last November. And every week, uh, PIs are giving their talk about uh, their team. And next week will be uh, done by this Akiko Takeda. And uh, later, you can see this schedule. So please join if you are interested in it. Okay, so let's start um, the introduction of our team. So today uh, we are the language information access technology team. I'm the leader of the team, uh, Satoshi Sekine. Okay, and our goal of our team is the this, uh, to build AI system which can explain its decision in language. So nowadays, you know that deep learning is very popular and uh, nothing can be done without that. Uh, but it's just giving answer without explanation. And there are research to do, to give some kind of interpretation, explanation they say, but I think it's interpretation. Interpretation people need to interpret, not just telling you. But uh, explanation is something like a teacher may give to a student in language. Okay, you can give something other than language, but in, in our case, we try to make it in language. Okay, and we believe the teacher needs to have knowledge and technology uh, and technique to manipulate it in order to create the explanation. An example of this interpretation first is like this. So image recognition is one of the popular tasks at the deep learning. So in order to understand this is a uh, big one, you uh, people try to do this kind of image uh, things. So annotate uh, or put some heat map and uh, know that, oh, this is the area, uh, the machine understand this is a beagle. Or in case of machine, uh, machine learning, uh, they can create this kind of attention mechanism that this word in English is corresponding to this word in French. It seems working, but in order to understand this, you need an interpretation. Instead of interpretation, what we want to create is explanation. And this is an example I have been using. So this in year of 2011, IBM Watson at, uh, tried to beat the champions at Jeopardy. It's a famous US uh, quiz show. Okay, and this is one of the questions they actually cannot answer correctly. Uh, US city is its largest airport is named for World War II hero its second largest for World War II battle. And they, Adam Watson answered Toronto, which is wrong. But they, what they can provide as a evidence is 14% Toronto, 11% Chicago, 10% Omaha. This cannot explain anything. Okay, and, but so something I want to create is this explanation. Uh, Toronto is the only city which came to my mind. I know it's wrong because it's a city in Canada, not in the US. Its largest airport is Toronto Pearson International Airport, blah, 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 blah. So this is what I call explanation. Maybe if one of the champion make the answer uh, and they don't know the answer and they just guess Toronto, they may uh, create this kind of explanation uh, as a human. 
So I want to make this kind of system which can create this, this uh, explanation. So uh, that's our goal. So creating this kind of sentences for the question is the goal of our team. Okay, in order to do so, we have a lot of things to do, uh, not just applying deep learning. Deep learning will be a very good uh, weapon to do this, I'm sure, but it's not the only thing we need. As I said, knowledge is in, important. So one of the topics in the team is Shinra. That is to build a world knowledge using Wikipedia by resource by co probability contrib contribution, which I'm going to explain after this introduction talk. And the frame group uh, that uh, is working on the language, building language knowledge instead of word knowledge, uh, focusing on a predicate frame right now. It may be expanding and connect with Shinra word knowledge in the future. Okay, and also semantic group is uh, applying the deep learning to language and image problems. There are several people in a group, in a team uh, working on this. Also, when we are working with uh, Wikipedia, we believe that information credibility is very important. So several people on my, my team is working on this. Okay, so this is our team member, including the part-time students and uh, annotators and etc. In total, we have around 50 people working on this. And the largest uh, group is Shinra. And the frame group, there are several people there. Uh, including the visiting researchers from uh, Waseda and Keio and Nagoya universities, and the semantic group and the information credibility group. Okay, and today, uh, so myself is going to explain the Shinra uh, project, and the second talk will be given by uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Kawahara uh, in the frame group, and the third talk will be given by uh, Kurita in the semantic group. And lastly, uh, Mr. Nakayama is going to give uh, uh, research uh, from the Shinra project. Okay, then I'm going to explain the Shinra project in Japanese after all of these four talks. Okay, it's like this. So first 10 minutes, so 10 minutes is uh, finishing right now. I gave the overview of the team and next I will give a Shinra project for 20 minutes. Then the frame group from Kawahara-san. And uh, Kurita-kun gives this uh, generative language group, uh, grounding, grounded policy in region and language navigation. And then Naka Nakayama-kun is giving a talk about uh, this similar related task. Okay, then again, I'm going to give a talk in Japanese. Uh, it's the same as second talk in Japanese. Okay. So that's uh, the overview of our team and overview of today's talk. Okay, so Shinra is a project to structure Wikipedia based on extended name and entities. It started 2017 and is still continue working on this. Okay. And why we are doing this, uh, I exactly said this, uh, we want to create an explanation and in order to do so, we need a word knowledge. And why we need a word knowledge? Remember this question? Okay, if we had this kind of structure of knowledge, like Toronto is a city in Canada, uh, which has an airport called Pearson International Airport. And Pearson International Airport is located in Ontario and name origin is Lester P. Pearson and Lester P. Pearson is this kind of person. Then we can cross her to make the explanation or the answer uh, like I showed before uh, with, a, with a logical reasoning results as a logical reasoning results. Okay, people may say that there are such knowledge already like DBpedia, Freebase, Wikidata, Yago, Babunet. But you can look at that too, uh, easily. Uh, easily you can find these are very, very noisy. Uh, this is one of the example, why it's, uh, how it's noisy, dirty. This is a structure uh, of some airport. 
think, and uh, it's attributes, list of attributes. And attributes are so, so bad. For example, this one says distance to Belfast, distance to capital, distance to Cardiff, distance to Dublin. Dublin. These are listed as a, as a attribute for airports. And uh, Canton, this is actually Switzerland states, and etc. And DBpedia is a great resource. Uh, you can use that for several uh, many purposes. But um, try to use this as a knowledge base for natural language processing. This is so dirty. Uh, the reason is, I believe the reason is that the structure of the knowledge, like this attribute, list of attributes, are also designed by crowds. Anyone can um, propose attributes. So there are lots of attributes like this, and that's not good. So I believe the answer is that the uh, ontology or design of the knowledge has to be done by top down. Somebody used uh, well-designed ontology. And population, the knowledge is huge, so you cannot uh, create a knowledge by hand. Okay? In the past, some people tried like EDR or psych, but uh, population is very hard. So uh, what we learn from Wikipedia is that the population can be done by crowdsourcing or maybe by AI using the Wikipedia like resource. Okay, so we, it's like a pyramid. So all the people who is working on creating the pyramid doesn't have to know the physics, but some people have to know the physics and some, has to, some people have to design it. Uh, but once it designed, Okay, let people work to create, uh, to put the song or as a, uh, to create a pyramid. Okay, so in, a, in other words, we want to create a knowledge of pyramid, pyramid of knowledge. Okay, and uh, design. So I, I, we are using extended name entities and it's an ontology for names. I have been working on this since uh, year 2000, so 20 years. And this is designed based on the encyclopedia and other resources. It has uh, 200 categories and each category has uh, 10 to 30 attributes. Um, we carefully des uh, designed. Okay, so if we use this e and e extend the entity and Wikipedia and put the Wikipedia into e and e framework, then we may be able to create the structural knowledge, okay? But annotation by hand is so expensive. But uh, so so how to how to solve this? I cannot ask you know, Japanese government to give me billion dollars. Uh, but we instead we believe we have a technology to do this. Uh, in other words, it's called information extraction. From sentence, we extract the knowledge we want. Okay, so let's use this kind of system technologies and ask many people to work on this and put the knowledge, uh, put the output together in order to create a knowledge. That's something we are uh, conducting uh, as a Shinra project. So we utilize a variation project like KBP on Cornell. We give our training data and we evaluate the system by test data but we will not open the test data and the participant has to run the system for the entire resource. The output to the participants are gathered and we create a resource using all of them called ensemble running, which will be explained by Nakayama Kun's talk today. And uh, also we can apply active running or bootstrapping as a, as a project, not just single system. Okay. Once we and we run this uh, evaluation and get the result, results out of this, and we can use as a training data. We can add this as a training data. Okay, so we are running the evaluation project for three years in the past, but this is not just evaluation. We are working on resource construction and we named this effort as a resource by collaborative contribution. Let's do it together, okay. Okay, so I'm explaining a little bit more about the Shinra. So we have been doing the two tasks so far. One is attribution extraction tasks. So uh, for Japanese Wikipedia page, 
We have an EME and each EME has an attributes. So ask the participants to exact that value of each attributes. Okay, we did this for the last three years and uh, we have we finished, I think, around uh, 80 categories already. We have more to come, but uh, we have done more than half of them. Okay, and also last year, we did the categorization task. So Japanese Wikipedia has already categorized into one of or so, some of the uh, EME categories. So one Japanese page is categorized as a country page already. Uh, we have done this for 800,000 Japanese Wikipedia pages. Okay, but this is not down for Matringa. Uh, English has no categorization and so on. So we decided to do this for 30 languages. Yeah, I will explain later, but this is called Shinra 2020 Matringa task. Okay, first I will explain the attribute extraction task. I'm sorry, this is Japanese. So from this uh, uh, airport wiki Wikipedia page, we uh, pick systems, uh, participating, participating system for the evaluation task are supposed to extract, for example, IATA from the page, ICAO from the page, or number of runaway, uh, or the length of runaway, or nearby airport, et cetera. Okay, some are written in the info box, some are not. In case of, actually, in case of airports, there are uh, many of them are written in info box, but not all of them. And other categories, not always the case. Okay, so extraction of attribute value from Wikipedia. On the first year, five categories, second year, 28 categories, third year, 45 categories. And uh, we are done this. And usually we start from spring, uh, the end ending fall, and we have a uh, the final workshop at the in November or December. Okay, first uh, company CD airport chemical compound is the first year, and organizations and locations second year, and facilities and events. There are lots of uh, subcategories, so in total it's forty five uh, categories in facilities and events. Okay, we gave out 200 to 1,000 training data and the participant will create the data for all the other uh, instances, but we will evaluate only some of them, 100 instances out of all the data. Okay, we have a, a 15 system participated first year from eight groups, second year 11 groups, and so last year, this year, no, last year. 2020, unfortunately, we got only two groups. So we have a uh, 40 plus people in the committee member. Okay, uh, for the future, I we are we have an idea how to do this kind of thing, but um, this last year we have only two. <coughs> okay, and uh, this is a result from the first year. So five categories: person, company, city, airport, and compound, and uh, we have high eight participants. Actually, Unisys uh, make the, the good system which achieved the first rank in three categories, but TUT got first uh, ranking at, at the airport and AIP, a group, make first in the city. Okay, but the nice thing is that, okay, this is a single, uh, single system best, uh, best results. But we do, we did ensemble running. We combine output of all the system and try to find the best uh, results. Then we found that, for example, in case of compound, we found we made a system uh, just combining four systems here. We got 65 F measure compared to 47, which is the best as a single system. We got 18. F major improvement. That's huge. Uh, that's not just, that cannot be achieved just by applying the uh, deep learning or something, but for you know, using four system, okay, some of them, uh, I think most of them use the deep learning actually, but the collective effort can make much better results. That's, that's a really encouraging result. 
Okay, so the second year we got the similar uh, results, but the third year, last year, uh, we haven't done much since then. So I can I cannot report that at this moment. Uh, um, I will change my topic to categorization task. Okay, Shinra's categorization task is to categorize Wikipedia pages into 219 ENE uh, extended name and entity categories. Some has more than one, so multi-level ca categorization classification. Okay, and the target language is this, uh, English, Spanish, French, German, Chinese, etc. These are 30 most popular uh, Wikipedias. Okay, and the version is done on the F1 mission. Okay, how we can prepare the training data, you may, you may ask. Okay, that can be done by language link. We have categorized all the Japanese Wikipedia pages and then fortunately, there's a language link from Japanese to German in, case, in this case. Okay, so by using this language link, 30, 316 pages has already categorized, sorry, classified, but categorized. Okay, using this as a training data, maybe a little bit noisy, but uh, people can create a model or system. Then you can predict the remaining two million pages in German Wikipedia. So that's how we did this uh, Majoringa task. Okay, these are the 30, uh, actually 31 languages, including Japanese. And for example, in case of English, there are 5.7 million pages. Among them, 51, uh, 510,000 pages has a link from Japanese. So 8.8% .8 of the data are already categorized by using the language link and so on and so forth. Okay, and uh, okay, this we distributed lots of data, Japanese Wikipedia categorized by ENE, of course, and the language link for all 31 languages. And the Wikipedia contents, uh, two types we created, Wikipedia dump and Sira search dump. This is a text format mostly. So if you want to pause them or do some deep learning um, analysis, you can use this. Okay, and of course, uh, extended main entity definitions in English and Japanese we distributed. Okay, and all of this uh, Wikipedia related data is uh, uh, the data on January 20, 2019. Okay, we released the data in January last year, and the evaluation has finished at uh, August and the version results are back. And this year, this Matringa task was done under NTCIR 15. So there was a conference to report the results. Okay, we got the 10 groups participated uh, from Japan, four economies, India, etc., universities and so on. And people work on Arabic and French, uh, eight, eight groups work on this Arabic and French uh, seven Chinese, etc. Okay. okay, and four groups actually work on 30 languages, one group 28 languages, etc. So we have a, a very active uh, uh, participation. Okay, and uh, this is a results. Actually, one system, uh, FPTAI, uh, dominated, uh, got a lots of uh, first rank results, but other system also got uh, good results as well and so on. Okay, and also this is nice that uh, this is very, very simple uh, ensemble running, the majority voting. So we got this much output. And although this is quite good system, we do the majority voting, including all of the systems. Then the one with green uh, achieve the better results than the best system. And in total, it's, we got uh, be better results uh, as well. 87.38 instead of 86.5 there. So mostly around 85 to 80, 76 at the bottom. These results are achieved in the categorization task. It's quite good. Okay, and uh, this year, 2021, 
we are planning to run three, three um, evaluation tasks. So I hope many of you can join, you will join. Okay, the first task is Shinra 2021 Marjuringa. This is exactly the same as last year's Marjuringa categorization task. We achieved 85 F measure, but it's not good enough to be used as a resource. So we want more effort on this task. And this year we are providing the results of 2020 system outputs. You can, you have to declare you are going to use this or not, because otherwise you can easily achieve 85% 85, 85 F measure. Uh, so you can create from scratch without looking at the output, or you can use this and try the ensemble learning or some other uh, means. And that's that's something uh, we are running. Okay, and also uh, we are doing this Shinra 2021 crowd matching our task. Okay, and uh, because our our result is 85 or 80 percent EF measure. So it's not perfect. And we are trying to know, trying to uh, improve the result by using a crowdsourcing. Okay, and uh, we, if you participate in this, you got the system output and try to correct the output as efficiently as possible by Amazon Mechanical Talk. We are going to provide uh, the money to participate in this crowdsourcing uh, in order to do the crowdsourcing, maybe it's small, uh, but we will support financially to, uh, to participate in this. Um, and we want to know, we want to find out the efficient way to improve the results. Okay, and the Shinra 2021 link JP. So, so far uh, in the attribute extraction task is to extract a value of attribute as a string. So we got, uh, for example, capital of Japan is Tokyo. Tokyo is just T-O-K-Y-O, -O, but it's not linked to the Tokyo page in the Wikipedia. So this is a task to link the T-O-K-Y-O -O as a capital of Tokyo to Wikipedia Tokyo page. Okay, we will give uh, attributes uh, for some categories, we are thinking to use the seven categories with uh, all the correct attribute values. And the task is to find the corresponding Wikipedia page. Okay, I, I sincerely hope that uh, we got the many, many participation for these tasks. Okay, and this is organizer for matching our task last year, sorry. And uh, this is a link uh, for the most of the uh, information about Shinra. And this is Shinra homepage. If you can take the picture of QR code, you can go there. And uh, you can ask us uh, by email, or maybe there's a Slack for this task. So please uh, do so. Uh, if you are, you, you are interested in, maybe I can uh, answer those questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is all I have. And uh, thank you. Um, I got three questions in the chat and I think I'll quickly answer some of them, try to. Uh, okay, in the healthcare machine learning from Thomas. Thank you very much. In healthcare mach uh, machine learning applications is expected not to only explain interpret uh, value the results that talk to the citizen but also why the model made such decision. Yeah, Do, does your approach allow for such AI model self-explanatory too? I'm sure there are many uh, different occasions, you know, different type of explanation and image is important for some of them too. But also when, for example, for, when the doctor explains something to the patients, we cannot just show the picture or image of some X-ray or something, but you may, need some explanation that can be uh, can be used okay simple answer if you want to discuss please send me email more um the fat nlp algorithm do you recommend for extract and then sample the other okay um no 
there is no simple answer to this. Uh, you can read papers from the participants. Um, or it's, there's an archive in the, on the page. Okay. And it's not so more on this task. Maybe I, 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 I'm not going into the technical detail. Please uh, survey. Is it possible for AI to achieve pseudo understanding of text? Is it possible? What is a method? Um, yes, I think so. Uh, lots of the things uh, deep learning is doing is I call, I, my understanding is a pseudo, pseudo understanding. It's not really understanding. Uh, so use deep learning to do um, things and which may be useful. I, I'm not against deep learning at all. It can be used for many, many purposes. And, uh, and that's that's short answer, I'm sorry. Uh, if you are interested, please send me email. Okay. Okay, and I, I think I answered this last question as well. So thank you very much. Um, I'm a little bit over my time. So I will give the uh, Mr. Kawahara about the next talk. Okay. And, yeah. Thank you. So um, I'm Daisuke Kawahara from Ozena University and Riken AIP. Um, the title of my talk is Acquiring Wide Coverage Semantic Brain Knowledge using the wisdom of clouds and artificial intelligence. So this is a joint work with Ohara-san, Sasano-san, and Sekine-san. So here we have two Japanese sentences. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you understand the Japanese. But anyway, uh, the first sentence is, uh, watashi ga shiyoshi okuru. Uh, this means I will send a specification seat and the other example is, watashi ga Tokyo eki made san ni okuru. Its meaning is, I will bring three people to Tokyo Station. So in these examples, the different, uh, that same verb, okuru, is used, but the meaning of this is different as represented in this translated sentences. So this meaning of okuru is sent, and the meaning of this is bring. So to make computers understand this difference, so we need to give a kind of a label like this, sending and bringing. So this is a background of this study. So we have um, two Japanese frame resources. One of such resources is top-down frame knowledge. So this is semantic frames of Japanese framenet, JFN. So in JFN, frames are defined as senses. And JFN has been constructed manually. So its coverage is not so high. And the other resource, frame resource is bottom-up frame knowledge. This is Kyoto University case frames or KCF. So in KCF, frames are defined as predicate IMA structures. A predicate IMA structure is uh, defined as a group of a predicate and its arguments. And KCF has been constructed by automatic clustering. So its coverage is very high. So our purpose of this study is to link these two resources to increase the number of annotated sentences of JFN and to improve the frame definitions of JFN and finally to give semantics to KCF. So again, we have these two um, sentences and I want to explain the relations between JFN and KCF. So in KCF, uh, these two sentences are divided into two different case frames. And here we have um, the predicate okuru and we have two arguments, watashi ga and shiyoshou. And 
Well, here we have three arguments. And so we can assign the sending frame of JFM to this predicate. And also we can assign bringing frame to this verb. And in JFM, we have these definitions. So for sending frame, the definition is like this. A sender plans the past of a theme and places it in circumstances such that it travels around this path. And for bringing frame, an agent moves to the goal by the path that is self-controlled and shared with the theme. These colored boxes mean the frame elements or semantic roles. So for these sentences, we can assign these frame elements like sender, theme, agent, board theme. So um, we can get this kind of um, semantic understanding by using the JFM semantic frames and frame elements. So this is an uh, introduction on FrameNet and Japanese FrameNet. So these are English and Japanese language resources based on frame semantics. So people understand the words by performing mental operations on what they already know. Such background knowledge is describable in terms of semantic frames. Semantic frames mean schematic representations of the uh, conceptual structures and patterns of beliefs, practices, institutions, images, etc., evoked by words. And each frame has its own frame elements or FEs. So this corresponds to semantic rules. And we have lexical units or LUs. This is a pairing of a word with a meaning or a frame. So we have some statistics of FrameNet and JFN. The number of semantic frames is around 1,000. And the number of annotated sentences is um, 200,000 in FrameNet and about 8,000 in JFN. So the, num now the number of annotated sentences in JFN is much smaller than that of FrameNet. This is a, a JFN example sentences of the Japanese verb okuru. And for the sending frame, so this is an example sentence. This means um, Hideyoshi uh, sent, sent an email to home. And for bringing frame, so this is an example sentence. So this means I bring you to the hospital. So we use these example sentences to link with the uh, KCF. So this is an uh, introduction slide of Kyoto University case frames for KCF. So uh, predicate argument structures are automatically clustered into case frames. So these are the examples of the verb okuru. So we have about 10 frames for this verb. The first one means I, who person, send a mail or message to cell phone or a person. So this means I send a mail frame. The second frame is encourage, and the third frame is uh, send an application to company or person. So in the case if uh, example sentences are linked to each case figure in the case frame. And these are the example sentences of KCF of Okuru. So, so we have nine frames. And so these are the representative sentences for each. Uh, case frame in KCF. So this is an approach. So we first link the KCF and JFN by using crowdsourcing for predicates included in both JFN and KCF. So we have uh, 935 predicates uh, both in JFN and KCF. So we use crowdsourcing to link these predicates. And then we also uh, try to try automatic linking for predicates only in KCF. So I will explain these two approaches from the next slides. 
So this is a screenshot of Krauslow sentence selection. So we have this representative sentence. And this is extracted from the sixth frame of Okuru. And we have three choices. The first choice corresponds to the sending frame of Zehem, and the second choice corresponds to bringing frame. And we have also the other choice. So this means, um, so this sentence is not similar to either of these sentences or cannot judge. So this is the other choice. And so the crowd worker should uh, choose one of the choice from these three choices. So this is an example result of this occur case. So we asked um, the same question to 10 crowd workers. So for example, for the first um, frame, we got 10 votes for sending frame. And among nine frames, eight frames are correct as a result. And in these results, we have other cases. So these are frames contain um, encourage and uh, live a life and spend a time or use. So these examples mean uh, idiomatic expressions or multiple expressions. So the majority vote of other indicates the existence of the um, idioms or multiple expressions. So this is a very useful to um, modify or improve the JFN annotations or definitions. And this is the current status of um, 935 reports um, existing both in JFN and KCF. But um, so about 200, um, 19 predicates don't have the annotated sentences. So we are currently annotating examples in JFN. And so we are um, annotating for the remaining um, nine, uh, sorry, 716 predicates. And this is the current status. So I will explain the analysis for these 37 uh, predicates and part of 175 predicates. So this is analysis one. So this is a result of majority vote for 37 predicates with two JFN frames. So, um, so there are varying degrees of accuracy in the majority vote by crowd workers, depending on semantic properties of each predicate, quality of the current content of JFN, and quality of each KCF sentence. And we categorized these 37 predicates into three categories. So in category one, the uh, two JFN semantic frames are automatically disjoint, distinct, was it disjoint. So, so for example, the occur verb is, uh, has ascending and bringing frames and the meanings are very different. And it, its accuracy is very high. And the second category, is, uh, the, is that the two JFN semantic frames are close in meaning or so linked by a frame to frame relations. So for example, the Iku has a, a very similar frames, motion and self motion. So in this case, the accuracy is not so high, uh, 55%. The third category is the incorrect frame assignment in JFN or new frame assignment is needed in JFN. And so, for example, this uh, adjective text uh, has uh, two frames, suitability and desirability. But um, so as a result of crowdsourcing, this desirability frame is not needed for this predicate. And so the, in this category, the accuracy is also is not so high, so that is 9.9%. So this is the nice one. 
And this is analysis too for the other boards for 85 predicates with only one Zeyhen frame. So in this case, the predicates are monosemous in the from the definitions of the Zeyhen frames. Now this table shows some statistics for the other boards. So this column means the number of other boards. So for these um, KCA frames with many other boards, contain these multiple expressions or MWEs. So this is very consistent with the previous discussion. And for these um, KCA frames with this other boats, um, there are many multi-sense uh, cases and incomplete ZFN annotations. So from this result, we need to improve ZFN frame assignments or annotations by other means. So this is analysis two. So this is our roadmap. So first we will link remaining predicates that exist in both ZFN and KCF. And also we will assign ZFN semantic frames to the predicates that only exist in KCF using the Sassanosan method for automatic frame assignment and evaluate the results by crowdsourcing. So I will explain this uh, from the next slides. And we will also evaluate annotated sentences and extend the complex predicates. And finally, we will align JFN frame, frame elements or FEs to KCF case markers. So this is, um, automatic linking of KCF to FrameNet and future plan. So we um, tried the linking of KCF to Japanese FrameNet and also English FrameNet. And also we are trying to uh, induce the frames with contextualized word representations. So this is the first trial. So this is automatic linking of KCF to JFM. So uh, we link uh, each KCF to one of the JFN frames that contain the verb as a lexical unit. So in this example, uh, this is a case frames of Hurumau. And also we have several annotated sentences for this Hurumau predicate. And in this case, these uh, predicates belong to um, either of these offering or conduct as JFN frames. And then, so we used the um, uh, embeddings to calculate the similarity between the, these uh, example words and the example words in the KCF. And the uh, evaluation result is uh, around 0.75%, uh, 75%. And in this case, the number of candidate frames is only two. So this is a uh, uh, high accuracy uh, compared to the next um, linking to the original frame net case. So this is a more challenging case. So we first narrow down the candidate frames by taking only the verb into account. And we calculated the similarity between the um, examples in the original frame net, English frame net, and the examples in KCF by using the cross linear word representations. So in this case, we cannot have the Japanese examples in the uh, frame net. So we only have the English examples in the English frame net. So we need to use the cross linear word re representations to calculate a uh, similarity between the English words and the Japanese words. So in this evaluation, the frame identification accuracy is around 44%. So this is not so high, but the number of candidate frames is over 900. So this is a preliminary result. And also we are trying to uh, fully induce a better frames with contextualized word representations. So this is a background. So the current KCF is too fine-grained. And as a result, some frames do not have enough case examples. And KCF doesn't contain inter-frame relations. And also recently contextualized word representations uh, such as Elmo and BERT have been shown to be 
very useful for capturing the ambiguity of word instances. So we are trying to automatic frame induction using the contextualized word representations. So this is a preliminary result. So if we applied clustering uh, based on contextualized word embeddings. So we currently using the BART large uh, and also the Gaussian mixture model as a clustering method. The following um, graph means the mappings between the clusters and frames using the TSME. And this is a result for the decline. So in, in this case, um, the fall and the turn down um, cases are clearly distinguished. So this is a very good case. And also this is a charge result. This is uh, also the very good result, but this fire case is not a good because uh, this group means uh, firing uh, cases, and but there are many mixed cases of shoot projectiles and use firearms. So, so these cases are very uh, similar. So in this case, uh, the similar examples cannot be distinguished by using the contextualized examples, contextualized embeddings. So this is a summary. So we are now uh, linking two frame knowledge, ZFN and KCF, to make wide coverage, semantic frame knowledge by using cloud sourcing and the automatic process. And our final goal is to make computers or AI truly understand the language. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much. So I have several questions. The first question is, what is the difference between the word sense dissemination and the frame dissemination? So this is very uh, uh, similar. Um, so the sense dissemination of predicates is a uh, is corresponding to the frame dissemination. And the second question is, is the frame net architecture same, same based on graph theory or similar to graph convolution network? So it is not the same or this, this is not similar to the graph convolution network. So please see the um, web page of frame net. Next question is what embedding method is used? So we used BERT embeddings to calculate or plot, plot by uh, to applying clustering. So please see the BART paper. And the final question is the Gaussian kernel suitable for GMM. I'm not sure, but so I we are trying many methods. So this is a, my uh, brief answer. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Kawahara-san. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Kota Nakayama from Riken AIB. Now let me talk about consider reducing the burden of participants in resource co uh, construction shared tasks. Uh, first of all, let me explain the resource constru construction shared task. Uh, as the name implies, this is a shared task to build the resource uh, conducted in the following steps. Uh, first, Task participants will receive labeled and unlabeled data from the task organizer. Second, the participants uh, develop system using labeled data. Third, uh, the participants will make predictions for unlabeled data using their systems and submit them to the organizer. Fourth, the task organizer will evaluate part of the submission data and return the participants results. Here we can get resources such as knowledge base by ensembling the prediction results obtained in shared tasks. And the unlabeled data distributed to participants are the instances of the full resource. Now, before I talk about the main topic of this presentation, let me talk about the ensemble methods. Uh, in practice, uh, while running single tasks, we force the same program 
uh, some programs with uh, ensemble. First, uh, since we aim to build relatively uh, complex resource, uh, it is costly to prepare label data specifically for the ensemble. Uh, also, due to uh, the diversity of participating systems in the tasks, output probability is may not be available. Uh, in summary, an ensemble method that is unsupervised and independent of the output prob uh, probability is uh, desired. To achieve the, uh, these uh, requirements, we propose the polydistillation ensemble. Uh, or PDE for short. PDE is a method that uh, applies the concept of knowledge distillation to ensemble. Here, let me briefly explain knowledge distillation. Uh, knowledge distillation is technique commonly used to reduce, reduce the number of parameters in models. Uh, parameter reduction is performed by learning a new model from uh, predictions uh, of some systems. At this time, the source and destination of learning are called teacher and student, respectively. And learning a student from some teachers is called distillation. On the left side is an example of distilling from a single teacher. And uh, on the right side is this ring from the ensemble results of multiple systems. Now back to the explanation of PDE. In PDE, the model is trained twice, in the distillation phase and the ensemble phase. In the distillation phase, the model is trained to mimic the production result of participating system. To phrase it in terms of knowledge distribution, we think the uh, uh, we think the participation system as teacher and uh, uh, models is students and distribute it to the students. Uh, at this time, most of the student models share the same, same parameter. Uh, in, the, in the ensemble phase, uh, the shared model has been trained again. In this case, the training data distributed to the participants, uh, distributed to the participants in the shared tasks can be used. Also, we use uh, but ensemble for convenience, the essence, essence of PDE is to run a single model, a uh, single model that goes beyond the teacher systems by leveraging, uh, leveraging the knowledge of teacher systems. The advantage of PDE are that it does not require ensemble specific level data and uh, does not depend on the output probability of the systems. Uh, PDE has already been experimented with in one of the similar tasks, similar 2019 JP, uh, and has shown its superiority over other unsupervised methods such as David Skinny and uh, voting, majority voting. Now, back to the topic of, uh, of shared tasks. As, as I mentioned earlier, in this shared task, participants need to make pre predictions for the uh, resources for instances. We think uh, that the cost of making prediction is a burden on participants, and it is a barrier to participant uh, attention. For example, uh, the SINRA 2020 ML task requires a prediction for up to 32 million instances. Uh, just download the data to a local machine and pre preprocessing, it can be a mo momental task. 
Yeah. Can we reduce uh, the burden on participants? This figure shows a situation where uh, participants are required to make the prediction for all instances as in the current situation. There are two possible situations. One solution is to allocate all unravelled data among all participants. However, there may be some problems. Even evenness in accuracy across instances. And burden depends on the number of participants. Another solution would be require participants to submit the system itself. In this way, the task organizer can take over the cost of making predictions. But even here, there are many possible programs. Systems are constrained by uh, the license and burden of, of system packaging and manual creation. And organizer is required to have operating environment for each system. It seems that it's not easy to reduce the burden on the participants. Now, let's take a moment to record the PDE. PDE exploits the predictions of the participating systems as teachers to train the students. Now, note that the prediction of the teacher systems do not have to be full unravelled data. That is, PDE can be used to reduce the burden of making prediction on participants. Exporting PDE for predictive target reduction allows for coherent prediction across instances and avoids the need for participants to submit their system themselves. Of course, the task organizer needs to be able to design a PDE model. Also, depending on the task, it may not be possible to find an appropriate model, PDE model. When applying PDE, these points should be considered in advance. Before implementing, implementing as a PDE in a real shared task, we conducted a primary experiment. We can use the results of similar 2020 ML for our primary exper experiment, a preliminary ex experiment. Uh, similar 2020 ML is one of the similar projects uh, to classify Wikipedia in 30 languages into about uh, about 200 clusters. Since it is a multi-level classification task, multi-level may be assigned to a single article. The SINDA 2020 ML task has already been finished with seven teams participating and 12 teams submitting results. We can conduct a preliminary uh, experiment to reduce the burden of, by sampling, uh, uh, sampling some of the submitted results. Now the PDE result will depend on the methods used to sample the teacher's predictions. We will experiment with random sampling and uncertainty sampling. Uncertainty sampling is a method that is often used in active learning. Now I will explain uncertainty sampling through a real example. In uncertainty sampling, we first train a machine learning model using label data. We used part best as our model. Our pre-trained large scale neural model widely used in the natural language processing uh, community. We use the first 500, uh, about 500 tokens of the Wikipedia article 
as input to the model for computational cost reasons. Uh, if output probability that a level L is attended to an instance X is P. Uh, the uncertainty score can be obtained with uh, this formulation of this formula. Uh, in other words, uh, the output probability is closer to 0 0.5, the higher the uncertainty score is. This, uh, in this preliminary experiment, uh, we will sample 200 instances uh, of each class with high uncertainty scores. Now we need to design a PD model. For shear model, we will use the bad base as, as well as uncertainty sampling. Now here are the results of the preliminary uh, experiment. This experiment was conducted in nine of the 30 languages with the most participants. The number of sample differs between languages uh, because uh, of the different number of classes included in each training data. Uh, the reduction rate, uh, the reduction rate indicates how much of the unravel data to be predicted has been reduced. For fair comparison, we use the same number of samples of uh, for random sampling as uh, for the uncertainty sampling. Uh, all score is uh, all scores in this table are F1 values. Best systems means uh, the highest score among the participating systems. Random sampling and uncertainty sampling higher than best system in two and one languages, respectively. Focusing on the micro average, the uncertainty sampling score was reduced to 1.4, but the burden was successfully reduced by more than uh, 96%. In this study, we use a simple PD model as a, pre as a preliminary experiment. But if we, if we build a more task specific model, uh, we may be able to prevent the decrease, uh, decreasing in score even more. We plan to apply our proposed burden reduction methods to actual similar tasks. We are thinking of applying it in Simula 2020 ML, and it will be called ML Lights. In ML Lights, we will reduce the number of prediction targets and include them into the submission data to the leaderboard. The submission data includes hidden text and can be treated as a final submission as it is. Uh, we hope that that will. Uh, sorry, we hope that many of you will participate in the similar task. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you very much, Hakama uh, kun And uh, any questions? We don't get any questions in the Q A. But uh, everything is clear. Okay, I think uh, this is good. And thank you very much. And thank you very much for all of you who participate this. And uh, from now on, I'm going to give a talk in Japanese. Um, but uh, final chance, if you any of you have a, a questions or you, if you have a question, uh, send me, send us email. We are very, very happy to uh, get questions and we are happy to answer those questions. Okay, um, thank you very much. And now I change my language into Japanese. Um, はい、えっ、ー、と、すいません、日本語でいきます。えっ、ー、と、いいですかね
。はい、あの同じスライド、英語のスライドそのまま使わせてもらいますが、えー、とあまり細かいところまでいかずに、あのここからのトークは、えー、シンラプロジェクトにぜひ参加していただきたいという、まあ、宣伝が主でして、えーまあ、前のトークで全部分かったよという方は、うん、どうぞこれであのその後に特に話はないのでこれで退出していただいてあの大丈夫です。はい。えっ、ー、とまあもともとあのずっと最初から言ってる通り私たちのグループはあの説明できる人工知能この自分の、えー、と自分の決意ディシジョンをあの言語で説明できる人工知能を作りたいと。いうことで、えーとまあ、こういった質問に対して、まあ、普通だったら、あのトロントが 14%、シカゴが 10% っていうだけではなくて、なんでこれがトロントだと思ったかということを、まあ、説明は人間だったらできるだろうと。で、それを、まあ、作るということで、えーまあ、どっちにしろ知識が必要で、えー、DB ペディア、フリーベース、ウィキデータ、ヤゴなんかでは、まあ、ノイズが非常に多くて、まあ、使い物にならない。いうことで、あのトップダウンのデザインをして、これはあれですね、トップダウンのデザインをして、中身はあのウィキペディアから持ってこようと。えっと、ウィキペディアを、だから、国茶語表、国茶語表現、ピクセンズ・ネムレンティリーって言っている、その、まあ、これですね、200種類のカテゴリーと、まあ、そこに定義されている10個から30個の属性値に、えっと、出込むという形で知識を作ろうと。いうようよなプロジェクトがシンラですでこれをまあ人手でやる、まあ、EDR とかサイクとか日本でもアメリカでもあの昔頑張ってそういうものを作ろうということはあったんですがなかなかまあ実現本当に使えるものは実,実現できなかったと言ってしまってよいのかなと思うんですけれどもえっとまあそれに対して、えー、まあやろうと思っているのはみんなでやろうとあの情報抽出だとか分類タスクのシステムはまああのまあ、頑張れば作れるので、まあ、それをたくさんみんなで作って、えー、いい知識を作っていこうと。まあ、クラウドソーシングの一番ではなくて、クラウドソーシングのシステム版みたいなあの実験をしてみようというのが進路プロジェクトの本質です。ですね。まあ、ここもそんな感じです。えー、リソースバイコラボレーコントリビューション。日本語では共同、あの共,共に協力して働く、えー、知識構築と呼んでいます。でえーとまあ、過去には、えー、とアトリビュートエクストラクションですね、あの情報あの、属性、それぞれのカテゴリーの属性の抽出タスクと、えー、30言語の分類タスクをやりましたと。で情報抽出に関しては、えー、このような感じで、小松市工場という空港の,あのページから、まあ、ここにある振り仮名とか IATA とか別名、名前由来とか、まあ、そういったものを抽出するというようなタスクです。でこの,あの属性ですね、えー、とフリーガナとか国とか利用、年間利用客数と、まあ、これは、あの、拡張こういう表現の方で決まっていまして、まあ、これもウィキペディアを見ながら結構いろいろ変えている最中ではあるんですが、あのこれまでやった,たあのカテゴリーについてはもうこれで進めています。まあ、これを作るために、あの、アルバイトのアノテーターと呼ばれている方々、18人か20人ぐらい雇っております。でえー、と2018年、2019年、2020年のタスクがありまして、それぞれ英語カテゴリー。まあ、最初は人名、会社名、都市、えー、市区町村名、えー、空港名と化合物名の5つのカテゴリーで、えー、決まった、その先のこういった空港の場合はこれですけども、この値をどのくらい正確に取れるかというタスクを行いました。で、えー、と毎回200から1000ぐらいのトレーニングデータを。配りまして、えー、参加者に参加してもらって、えー、と実現してます。で、えーとまあ、正解データがどれかと言わないので、例えば人名だとちょっと大変なんですが、あの20万人ぐらい日本語ウィキペディアのページにはいるんですけれども、その20万の中の100個、どれかは言わずに100個で評価しますということなので、参加者は20万人全部に対してシステムを走らせて抽出していく。まあ、あのそれが先ほど言った中山君の研究のモチベーションにもなっているんですけれどもあの、そういった形で知識抽出をやってもらうと。で最初の1年目は8団体から15システム、2, 回2番目は 10, 10団体で、3回目は2団体と。まあ、今回は
あのどんどんどんどんカテゴリー数が増えて、その前の年、前々の年のカテゴリーも含めて提出していただいているので、だんだん難しくなっているのと、まあ、去年はちょっとコロナの話もあって、うまく、えっと、伝達ができなかったという反省点もあるんですが、まあ、そういうことになっています。まあ、これについては、えっと、2021年、さっきの発表でもありましたが、2021年はこのタスクはちょっとお休みをしようと。いうふうに考えて、ちょっと作成をねっていうと最中です。で例えばあのその、たくさんの人が、えー、と参加していただいて、まあ、結果を良くしようっていうアンサブルラーニングというやつですが、まあ、これ1年目の人名、会社名、市町村名、空港名、加、え、護、ー、物名の結果ですけれども、あのまあ、例えば人名についてはチームが参加して、ユニシスさんが44で1位だったと。でただこの5つのあのシステムをうまくあの結合すると48ということで結合しただけで、えっと、このトップのシステムより4の F メジャー高い結果が出ましたで、えっと、一番いいのはコンパウンドで一番いいシステムで47ですけども、まあ、全部合わせると65倍になってもう合わせるだけで18という、まあ、簡単にディープラーニングやっても伸びないようなのりしろを得たという感じですで、まあ、ここまではアトリビュートタスクでで、えっ、ー、と、カテゴリーダイションタスクですね。えっ、ー、と、まあ、今まで日本語を中心にやってたんですが、まあ、マルチリンガルでや,やりたいと。他の言語でもやってみたいということで、まあ、英語、スペイン語、フランス語、ドイツ語、中国語、その他、パーっとブルガリー語もありますね。この30言語に対して、えっ、ー、と、カテゴリーあの、ウィキペディアのページ、それぞれの言語のウィキペディアのページを200種類の、えー、拡張こういう表現に分類してもらうというタスクです。で、えっ、ー、と、まあ、その30言語のトレーニングデータ全部作るのはもちろん大変なんで、えー、どうやったかっていうと、日本語の、あの、ウィキペディアは全部分類し終わってるので、日本語のウィキペディアのページと、言語間リンクですね。えー、これは何、何ちょっと読めないですが、あの、まあ、ここのページの日本語ページに、例えば、市区町村名ってあったら、それのリンク先のドイツ語のページも市区町村名だと。そういう前提で31万ページをカテゴライズしたということで、まあ、それをに基づいて学習してもらって、その結果、その学習結果で、あ学習者システムで、モデルで、えー、残りのドイツ語のページ、約200万、まあ、全部で230万ぐらいあると思うんですが、そのうちの200万ページをまあ学習してもらって、それをリソースとしていこうというようなことです。で、まあ、これ、えー、統計ですが、まあ、さっきのドイツ語から言うと、えー、と、ちょっとさっきの数字と違うかな。あ、ここが。えー、226万ページドイツ語にあって、そのうち31万ぐらいが日本語からリンクがあると。それで、14% の,あのページが日本語からのリンクでカテゴライズされて、それがトレーニングデータに使うと。まあ、あの、多分、えっ、ー、と、ドキュメント分類っていうのは、かなりあのでしょう歴史的なタスクで、まあ、人が機械学習があるとそれを分使ってどのくらいできるかっていうタスクを結構やってると思うんですがあのこれだけのトレーニングデータ、まあ、ちょっと完全に正解じゃなくてちょっとシルバーデータ的なところもあるんですがあのこれだけの学習データに<笑>基づいて分類タスクをやるっていう、まあ、これだけの規模の分類タスクをやるっていうのは、まあ、あ,のあまりないタスクかなと。思いますので、参加していただける、興味を持っていただける方には、それなりの価値があると思います。えー、ということですね。まあ、それで30言語もやっているということも、まあ、まず一つの特徴です。まあ、中にはあの、特に今回一番だったチームは、言語間リンク、まあ、30言語全部に関して、こう、網の目のように言語間リンクがあるので、えー、そうか、すみません。えっ、ー、と、言語間リンクがあるので、まあ、それを使って、で学習をより良くするとか、まあ、いろんなあのアイデアは使えると思いますので、えーまあ、そういったこともやってもらってもいいかと思います。はいまあ、あの今回のトップのチームはそれの知識を使ってました。でえーとまあ、去年のマルチリンガルタスクでは、えー、日本語のウィキペディアですね、分類された日本語のウィキペディアのページだとか、あの31言語間の言語間リンク。それから、えっと、ウィキペディアのコンテンツ、31言語のウィキペディアコンテンツですね、ウィキペディアのダンプとか、シラスサーチダンプとかっていうデータと、あの拡張こういう表現の定義書を公開して、参加者に配っております
、えー、去年は、えー、と去年の1月にデータをリリースして、3月にホームページコーポーパーティションをオープンして、えー、8月31日がアサミッションのデッドラインで、えー、こちらからの返事を、あの結評価結果は9月16日にお送りして、12月の8日、11日にカンファレンス。まあ、今年も大体同じようなスケジュール。まあ、あのできるだけ3月中旬にあのいろんなものをあの公開して、本当に始められる状態にしたいと、今頑張っているところです。えー、と去年は10チームが参加しました、えー。参加した国々が日本、ベトナム、インド、台湾、オーストラリア、フィンランドと、まあ、世界中から参加していただきました。えー、大学、会社、研究機関、まあ、いろいろあって、アラビア語、フランス語に8チームが参加などなどという感じになっています、えー。で、1つのシステムが30言語を対象にしたのが4チーム、28言語を対象のが1チームなどです。で、これが、えー、と結果で、まあ、結局、この、えーとえー、ベトナムから参加した FPTAI というチームが、まあ、かなり良かった結果を出しています。でえー、とこれもアンサンブルラーニング的にこの多数決っていうのをやってみたらあの最高システムよりいい結果をた単に単純に多数決ですねいい。いいシステム悪いシステム重みを全くかけずに単純に多数決しても、まあ、このくらいの,あの成果で、えー、と緑が囲った数字は、えー、と最高システムよりもいい数字を出しているという結果です、まああの。アンサンブルでみんなで知識を作ろうということが非常に有効だということがこれでわかります。でえーとまあ、このスライドをちょっと本当はもうちょっと詳しくお伝えしたいんですが、まだあの準備段階であのうまくで言えない部分もあるんですけども、えー、とまず、えー、今年は3タスクやります。マルえー、とシンダー2021のマルチリンガルですね。今年のマルチリンガルとほぼ同じものを、えー、やります。30言語。で、えっ、ー、と、まあ、一つあ、一種類目の違いは、えっ、ー、と、去年の結果をお渡しすることができますと。お渡しして、それを見たあの参加システムと、まあ、それを見ない参加システムをきれいに分けて、えっ、ー、と、評価しますというのと、あの、この前のトークで中山くんが言ってたんですが、えっ、ー、と、全部の結果を出すのは非常に大変なので、えっ、ー、と、一部の結果だけ、ML ライトっていうんですが、えっ、ー、と、一部の結果だけを出して、中山君のさっきの、えー、と発表のアルゴリズムで全データを推測してうまくできるかどうかというようなタスクもやってみたいと思っています。えー、それから、えー、とクラウドソーシングのタスクです。えー、とマルシリンガの,かあの分類結果、例えばドイツ語でも 90-85% とか言って、まだ 15% もエラーがあると。いう結果だったので、この 15% をクラウドソーシング、Amazon メカニカアタックみたいなやつで、あのどのくらい消すことができるかということを実験的にやろうと思っています。で、これもあの内にこもってというか、内側で、えっと、タスクを実施するんではなくてあの、参加者に参加していただいて、えっと、クラウドソーシングに出すタスクの、タスクに工夫をしていただいて、えー、どれだけ、えっと、エフィシエンティに効率的に、あのー、正解を直せるかと、より質よく、まあ、できれば、あのー、費用対効果も良い形で、えー、直せるかというタスクを行います。で、えー、と参加者には、アマゾンにメカニカルタークに、まあ、ちょっとそんなに大きなお金ではないんですが、お金をつけたもアカウントをお渡しするなりして、えー、と費用負担もこちらで持って参加していただくと。いいうやり方を考えていますあのちょっとまだファイナルではないので、えーまあ、大きくは変わらないと思うんですけれども、いろいろやり方はちょっと今、検討中です。はい。で、えー、と最後が、えー、と日本語タスクですが、えー、と日本語のじょ、えー、と属性抽出のタスクがちょっとあまりに規模が大きくなりすぎて、もう全部のカテゴリーの全部の、えー、と属性値に対応者システムっていうのはもう作れなくなってるなと。でまあ、参加者も 2, 2団体だったので、ちょっとお小酒は変えなきゃいけないと思ってまして、そ,それの検討は、えー、と今、裏でやっておりますけれども、あのーまあ、今回はそこの部分ではなくて、す、え、で、ー、に抽出されている属性値、日本の人が東京ってやったら、東京っていう文字をあの東京のウィキペディアページにリンクする
、まあ、東京っつってもいろんなありますし、えー、と池田町っつっても日本に 6, 6個あったりして、まあ、どの池田町か決めるとか、あのーまあ、そういった意味で、えー、リンクをするというタスクを計画しております。えー、現在のところ、えー、と7カテゴリーぐらいの、えー、とアトリビュートの値に対してやっていただくと。で数値とか、あと日付表現は抜くとか、いろいろと,、えー、とあの細かいルールを作らなきゃいけなくて、ま,あ、まさに今それを設計している段階で、えー、1ヶ月後には、えー、トレーニングデータというか、まあ、トレーニング、これは多分あの機械学習的、強者機械学習でできないんじゃないかと思うので、サンプルデータという形になるかもしれないんですけどもあの、まあ、どういったものかっていうことが分かるような、えー、とサンプルデータトレーニングデータを、えー、1ヶ月後ぐらいをに公開することを目指して今作成中ですで、まあ、作成しているときに、まあ、さっき言ったような問題がいろいろ見つかっているので、まあ、タスク設計も含めて今内部で検討しております、えー、ということでえっ、ー、とまあ、あの本当にあの今、聞いていただいています67名の方の、まあ、どなたでもあの興味がありましたら、ぜひこのタスクに参加していただければと思います。あの質問があれば、今、喜んで受けますのであの、またこうやったら参加しやすい、ああやったらあの参加したいとか、まあ、ここのところどうなってるんだろう、こういうことを聞いて参加するかどうかを検討したいということでもいいですので、えー、ご質問いただければ助かります。えー、っと、はい。すいません。こんな感じです。はい。えー、ご質問、コメント、あの何でもよいので、あの、シンラは本当にあの皆さんに参加して、なんぼのタスクとして、プロジェクトを立ち上げてますので、あのー、皆さんの声が、非常に重要ではありますあの。参加していただける方。はい、えー。この成果を持ち帰って授業に活用できますかはい、できますあの。システム自身のサブミットはあの期待しておりませんので、あの抽出結果あの、抽出システム、それぞれで開発した抽出システムは、あのそれぞれあの授業に使ってください。また、えー、と抽出した、えー、と知識についても、えー、ウィキペディアを元にしているので、えー、と、なんだっけ、えー、CCBC だっけ、えー、と、ちょっとごめんなさい、あの、確実にわかんないんですが、あの、コピーライトとしては、えー、ウィキペディアが持っているコピーライトをそのまま継承しなきゃいけないので、えー、その制限のもと一般に公開します。えー、ウィキペディアを使うっていうようなあの授業であればあのという、というタイプの。授業であればあの、この知識は自由に使っていただければと思っています。はいまあ、これはあの実は参加システム、参加してないシステム、あの団体か,か,かかわらず、えーっと、自由に使っていただくことがあの自然言語処理だとか、まあ、本当の意味の理解を伴った自然言語処理の、えーっと開発、研究開発を進めるために重要なあのリソースだと思ってますので、えー、根本的にはもうすべてオープンとあの。ウィキペディアのライセンスのもとすべてオープンというのが私たちのスタンスです。はい。えー、以上ですが、よろしいでしょうか。はい、あの、シンラ、えー、と私たちのところをあの、ページを見ていただければ、いろいろと情報はあのお出ししてますし、えー、過去のトレーニングデータだとか、いろんなリソースはダウンロードできますのであ、ちょっとアカウントを作っていただいて、ダウンロードのためのアカウントを作っていただけないとダウンロードできませんけれども、あのそれしてあの使っていただければ幸いです。あのまあ元々私自身はちょっとあのニューヨーク大学で20年ぐらい、えー、と研究をしていまして、まあ、やっぱり日本の自然言語処理の研究がちょっとなんだ、まあ、2週ぐらいあの周回遅れになってもう英語がドミネートされてるっていう事態にちょっと危機感を感じてまして、まあ、その大きな理由がやっぱり EDR っていう、まあ、昔すごいリソースを作った
のが、まあ、無償で公開しないのに、ワードネットが無償で公開されたと。まあ、ワードネットを超える実装したと思ってるんですけども、まあ、あのワードネットをやっぱり無償で公開したとか、あのペントイバンクだとか、まあ、そういうことがアメリカが先に行ってしまった理由かなと思ってまして、えーまあ、実際に三次言語をやったのも、やっぱり英語だけではなくて、それ以外の言語も。やっぱり言語は言語として研究すべきだということで、まあ、リソースがやっぱり重要だと。で、それを、あのー、広めたいという思いがあって、えっ、ー、と、やっております。まあ、私も日本人ですので、日本語にはあの強い思い入れがあり、えっ、ー、と、属性中心は今、日本語でやってますけれども、まあ、将来的には、あの、言語に依存しないビキデータみたいなものを、あの、目指して作りたいと思ってますので、あの皆さんご協力ご理解いただければあの幸いです。一番簡単なご協力は、まあ、あのとにかく参加していただくことです。で、あのアンサンブルラーニングの、えっと、例もお見せしましたけれども、あのもう全然あのトップからは離れているシステムでも、やっぱりそのシステムだけしか出してない正解っていうのがあるんですね。でそういうのをやっぱり見つけて、えー、と加えていくことで、全体のリソースは。良くなりますのであの、ユニークな形のシステムを作ってあのみたいとか、ま,あ、またはほぼ単純に本当にあのリーダーボードも作ってますし、そこで一番になりたいっていうことでもいいですし、あのまあ、どういうモチベーションでも参加していただければ幸いです。はい、えー、っと、ちょっと長くなりましたけれども、あのぜひよろしくお願いします。えー、では、今日のあの、言語情報アクセス技術チーム、AIP の言語情報アクセスチームのオープンセミナーはこれで終了させていただきたいと思います。最後までお付き合いいただきありがとうございました。では、これで終了いたします。はい、またあの、オープンセミナーの方、来週以降も水曜日の3時を基本として、えー、やっておりますので、えー、とぜひ、ご参加ください。はい。えそうですね。あの水曜日の三時ですね。すべて。はい。えー、自然言語に関連しては、三月三日に中村先生のトークもあります。はい。えー、ぜひあのご参加いただければ幸いです。はい。それではどうもありがとうございました。